Hi there everyone, welcome back to 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney. Today is Tuesday, August 10th. Thank you for being here for the top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. One of our top stories today is the top story, most likely probably around the country. Governor Andrew Cuomo of New York has announced that he will be resigning in two weeks today. This is following allegations that he sexually harassed 11 different women and also reporting coming out about potentially trying to interfere with an investigation dating back to the Obama administration. He's a three term governor of New York and he says that his resignation will take effect in two weeks. Now this is also as momentum had been building to call for his impeachment in the New York State legislature. It was the New York Attorney General's office that released the results of an investigation confirming those allegations, confirming that there are sexual harassment allegations from at least 11 women against the current governor of New York. Cuomo said that he had certainly offended those women and he did apologize for that, but he called the harassment allegations false in a video that was live on Twitter today. It's about a 22 minute video. You can find that linked on WKYC.com. He said that his inclination was to fight against this, but that he had chosen to step down because it's in the public interest of the state of New York. Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul, who joined Governor Andrew Cuomo's team in 2014, will be the person who replaces him in two weeks. And in doing that, she will be the first woman to serve as governor of the state of New York. In other big national news today, the Senate approved the $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure plan put forth by President Joe Biden today. This was a rare combination of Democrats and Republicans joining forces to overcome skeptics and deliver what will be a cornerstone if it does pass through the House and, of course, get signed by President Biden of his agenda. The final vote in the Senate was 69 in favor, 30 against, and this will be, once it makes it through the House, which is controlled by the Democrats, the first phase of President Biden's Build Back Better priorities. Now, as I said, headed to the House for a vote. Here's what's in that measure. It proposes almost $550 billion in new spending over five years. Now, if this does make it through, it will be an historic measure. There's money in there to rebuild roads and bridges, also to shore up coastlines against climate change, protect public utility systems from cyber attacks, something that we have seen happening with increased frequency lately. Also modernizing the electric grid. Public transit will get money there, including airports and freight rail. And most lead drinking water pipes in America could also be replaced under this plan. Here in Ohio, Senator, Senator Rob Portman, who led the Republican negotiation team, said that these are proposals that have been talked about for years, yet never seem to get done, including a bridge across the Ohio River that would connect Ohio and Kentucky. Senator Portman said, we'll be getting it right for the American people. Now, the total package is 2,700 pages. It's backed by the president, also by business, labor, and farm interests. And it did draw an expansive alliance of senators and bipartisan group in the House. In all, 19 Republicans joined Democrats in voting for the Senate passage. Vice President Kamala Harris, as presiding officer of the Senate, announced that final tally today. In other news, a militia group, the group that was accused in a Michigan kidnapping plan for the governor of Michigan, has also, according to a federal document, proposed attacking Ohio's Governor Mike DeWine. This is the same group that was accused of plotting to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. This was at the height of shutdowns and lockdowns in this area related to the COVID-19 pandemic. There are five men who have been charged related to the accusations in this plot. Now, it's according to a federal court filing, two of those accused men, Adam Fox and Barry Croft Jr. were at a meeting with other militia members in June 2020. And at that meeting, it was allegedly proposed to attack the governors of Michigan, Ohio, and Virginia. Governor DeWine said today that he doesn't have any other information other than what has been reported, so what we're telling you about right now. But he also has a rule that he doesn't talk about security. He said that when this came out in regards to Michigan's Governor Whitmer, that he expressed his outrage that anything like this would be planned and that we all have to condemn, a quote from him, such crazy activity. This is the latest development in this battle between the five men who are accused of the attack, of the planned attack, and the federal government. The men claim entrapment, saying they were persuaded by the government. In the filing, the FBI agents 
The federal filing says that the FBI agents did not entrap the men who are accused, saying that the vast majority of the information that they sought was not discoverable otherwise. You can read that full filing linked at WKYC.com. Now, speaking of our Ohio governor, we now know that the two-term Cincinnati mayor John Cranley has announced that he will run for governor of Ohio on the Democratic ticket. He'll, of course, have to go through the primary and hope to win that primary in order to make it to the final ballot. He's 47 years old and he's been looking at a bid for the Democratic nomination for months. He's raised over $1.3 million for the effort. That was as of July. We don't have the latest numbers for August if there's been more fundraising. He was elected mayor of Cincinnati in 2013, but he's now term limited, so he can't run for mayor of Cincinnati again, so now turning his attention to governor of Ohio. He joins another mayor, Dayton Mayor Nan Whaley, in the Democratic primary race. The 2022 Ohio gubernatorial election, that'll be on November 8th, 2022, and that will then elect the next governor of Ohio, whether that's someone different or whether that is current Governor Mike DeWine. He is eligible to run for re-election and is expected that it will be a contested primary for him. So no guarantee that Governor DeWine will be the person running on the Republican ticket in that 2022 election to take office then in 2023. Now it's Tuesday, so we'll take a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Ohio, and there are large numbers to report. In the last 24 hours, the Ohio Department of Health has reported 2,326 new cases of COVID-19. That's the largest daily increase since mid-April because we've seen over 1,000 more cases reported today on Tuesday than we did on Monday. And right now there are 1,090 people currently hospitalized related to COVID-19 in Ohio and 326 of those people are being treated in the intensive care unit. We also have new numbers for reported deaths related to COVID-19. That total number is now 20,580. That is 50 more than a week ago. And our vaccination numbers sit where they were at last week. Over 5.4 million Ohioans fully vaccinated more than 46% of the population, but not seeing significant increases in those numbers. Now, if you were in the Little Italy, Little, Little Italy, excuse me, that's a little bit of a tongue twister, Little Italy area today, you would have seen the statue of the Cleveland baseball great Rocky Colavio, Colavito unveiled in Little Italy. Definitely having a hard time with those words right now. He was one of the most popular players in Cleveland baseball history, so he was honored today when that statue was unveiled and dedicated in Little Italy. He earned four of his nine career all-star appearances while playing for the tribe. Mark Sommer, who is a member of the Rocky Colavito Statue Committee and author of the 2019 book Rocky Colavito, Cleveland's Iconic Slugger, said this, It's impossible to overstate just how much Rocky meant to a generation of tribe fans and to Italian Americans, and that the statue erected in Cleveland's Little Italy will reflect how beloved the power-hitting outfielder with a cannon-like arm remains. He went on to say Rocky always loved Cleveland and its fans and it's only fitting for him to be immortalized in Little Italy with a statue. And here's a story for you out of Maine. This will make you maybe feel a little bit better about people who are being really tough to those service industry people. Now the story starts out not so great but there's a twist in it. Tammy Ramsey is a hostess at the Union Bluff Hotel in New York, Maine. She's been working there for 25 years. She says she doesn't really, you know, remember specific customers, but there was one customer who came in who was kind of rude to her. But you know what he did? He left her a $100 tip and an apology letter after the fact. She said she doesn't remember specifically the customer that he was upset about waiting for a table for about an hour and a half, and then he swore at her and he stormed out. So in the apology letter, he said, I feel bad. This coming from a guy who tells people to be kind to service staff and to tip big post pandemic. How hypocritical. And he signed it an embarrassed customer. Tammy said that she gave him kudos for saying that he had a bad day and that customers have been on edge over the past few months. You know, people are just kind of getting back out there, not really sure how to act in public after a year and a half of being all cooped up in their houses. But she said she got goosebumps reading that apology letter and that she split the $100 tip with another hostess in Maine. So that turned things around for that situation. And today is National Spoil Your Dog Day. So if you're on our What's New Facebook page, you got to see sweet little puppy Mia. That's our producer, Monique Zappa's dog. We want to know how you're spoiling your pups. So we've got a 
couple of great photos on there already. Share your photos of how you spoil your pup, and I might use it in the trending stories segment in Clicking in Cleveland on What's New Today at 5 o'clock. That's where you'll find me next. And that is it for today's 3 News Now update on Tuesday, August 10th. Everyone stay safe, be well, and I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.